today we'll be looking at the murderous half-wolf abhumans that lurk within the space wolf's very DNA. Hello and welcome back to All Specs Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. We're back for another Space Wolf's data sheet review today and we're going to be taking a focused look at the Wolfen, including reviewing their rules, options, synergies on the battlefield and how I'd use them in a game. Now these are definitely models that divide opinion, I'll be honest compared with the Thunderwolf Cavalry and some of the other Space Wolf range, I can't say I'm the biggest fan myself. I think there's something just very uncanny valley about them being half Wolf and half Space Marines and not uncanny valley in a good way. Personally, I was a bit more of a fan of the original classic Metal Wolfen models, but I'm not debating that they are a highly detailed and very thought out plastic kit, if you are a fan of the aesthetic. In the background, the Wolfen are a corruption of the Hycanus Helix, a deadly part of the Space Wolf's gene seeds that can cause a violent transformation in the aspirant's body, causing them to devolve into near-feral beasts with a hunger for blood and flesh. Part of the duties of the wolf priests are to watch over their battle brothers and ensure that they curb the worst excesses of this werewolf-like nature. They supposedly take their name from a chieftain called Wolfen, who was the first to accept Lehman Ross's offer to become a transhuman space marine, but due to his secret ambition and jealousy of Ross, the gene seed turned him into a vicious monster instead. Despite general belief amongst the chapter that the Wolfen are entirely bestial and irredeemable, there are rare cases where Wolf Brothers can be reasoned with and brought under control, and since the curse has become more widespread, since the Thousand Sons performed a ritual destabilising the Canis Helix of a large number of Battle Brothers, they have often been seen fighting alongside Space Wolves across the galaxy, much to the horror and confusion of some of their allies. The Inquisition take a somewhat dim view of half-human, half-wolf monster hybrids. Let's see what these murderous beasts can do on the tabletop then, with a look at their datasheet. So Wolfen are an elite's choice for Codex Space Wolves, and at base each one costs 23 points and is armed with just its Wolfen claws. The squad is 5 models strong with a Wolfen pack leader, who only differs from the rest by having an additional attack. The Wolfen have a fairly fearsome profile, with a movement of 7 inches, weapon skill 3+, ballistic skill 5+, Strength 5, Toughness 4, 2 Wounds, 3 Attacks, Leadership 7 and a 4 plus save. Their durability is decently enhanced however, due to their Death Frenzy rule which gives them a 5 plus feel no pain like shrug off of lost wounds. So a very fighty, scary melee profile indeed. Those Wolf and Claws don't cost any points, but they're fairly basic close combat weapons with just AP minus 1, Strength User and Damage 1. Still though, with Shock Assault, meaning that say if you did take a full 10 man squad of Wolfen for 230 points, you'd be hitting home with 41 Strength 5 AP minus 1 attacks, hitting on 2s due to the Space Wolves chapter tactic. Certainly not bad, although the squad would be at least somewhat fragile with just that 4 plus armor save and the 5 plus feel no pain to protect them. The Wolfen pack leader is locked into taking Frost Claws however, which aren't really too bad at 11 points for a strength plus 1 AP minus 2 weapon, with damage 1, 1 additional attack so he has 6 attacks on the charge, and he also rerolls failed wound rolls. Basically he's going to make a mess of anything he comes into contact with. Any model in the squad can take a Stormfrag Auto Launcher. This is a 4 point little upgrade that's a 12 inch weapon with Assault D3 and Strength 4. Again if you had a full squad then this will be 20 shots, but with their very underwhelming Ballistic Skill 5 plus means that I typically not really want to take these and waste the points, particularly as they're often going to be wanting to advance and charge, which they can do due to their bounding lope ability. The Wolfen have the option to upgrade their Wolfen Claws to either a set of Frost Claws like the Pack Leader, which will cost them an extra 11 points, a Great Frost Axe for 9 points, or a Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield for an additional 18, putting each Wolfen at 41 points. We already mentioned the Frost Claws, a very scary all-round melee profile that will absolutely shred infantry. That Great Frost Axe has a Strength plus 3, so Strength 8, AP minus 3 and Damage D3. And for this one you can make one additional attack with this weapon on a turn in which it is charged. So for 32 points a model, these guys have ludicrously good damage output, with 5 attacks on the charge that are essentially a power fist profile for normal marines and hitting on 2s. A full pack armed with these will absolutely decimate whatever it slams into, doing an absolutely ludicrous average of 41 wounds to an average toughness 7 vehicle profile, or an average of 31 wounds to a knight handily killing it. Our final option are Thunder Hammers and Storm Shields, which are considerably more expensive at 9 points more than the Great Frost Axe, and frankly we don't necessarily need all that much more killing power once we've already got the loadout. The main thing that you actually want to buy the Thunderhammer and Storm Shield in, as they do come as a pair, 
is really for the Storm Shield, as they only have a 4 plus save normally, getting that 3 plus invul is absolutely great, turning them from a unit that's going to be quite easily mowed down by high AP weapons, to one that's incredibly resistant to them, and will certainly need focused concentrated firepower to bring down. It goes without saying that these will do even more damage to those vehicle targets, a full max out squad with 9 Thunderhammers and Storm Shields and the pack leader will do on average over 40 wounds to an Imperial Knight for example. So really I think that the main thing that you get these for is the extra durability as opposed to the extra hitting power. Though all the extra hitting power that you can get is great, particularly as you're unlikely to be reaching the enemy at full strength. We touched on some of them earlier, but the Wolfen have some really helpful special rules, as well as the standard Shock Assault combat doctrines, and they shall know no fear. They also get that Bounding Lope rule, which gives them advance and charge, which means they actually have really quite a scary threat range, and your opponent's rarely going to be able to say this Wolfen unit will definitely not be able to charge me. Theoretically, if you rolled all sixes, you could get yourself a 25 inch charge with the Wolfen, and even with no rerolls at all, you should have an average of a 17 inch charge on the squad, but they can reroll their own charges due to their curse of the Wolfen ability, only making their threat range more reliable. That death frenzy rule that gives them the 5 plus feel no pain type save also has another side which means that when the wolfman models are slain in the fight phase, once the enemy has finished making its attacks, you can attack with that model before removing it as a casualty. This makes it really punishing for your opponents to try and remove the wolfen in melee in any form, meaning that they could potentially fight once, and if they don't manage to kill their target and it swings back and kills them, then you get to have another go all over again, and if you happen to get charged yourself, then you're guaranteed at least one round of combat before you go down. It's a really nice advantage to have baked into the unit, and it's particularly rewarding against any armies that are melee focused, who will need to try and remove the wolfen in close combat. Now we come on to that Curse of the Wolfen ability, which has two parts to it, Hunt and Kill. Hunt they can benefit from themselves, and it's also an aura that they give to any friendly space wolves within 6 inches, or blood claws within 12, and it allows space wolves to reroll failed charge rolls, provided they're a infantry, cavalry, or biker. Very very good for a melee army indeed, makes it easier for characters to get into close combat while they're escorting your wolfen, and makes them a lot more reliable if they're coming out of preserve, say if they've been set up on the hunt. The other part is the Curse of the Wolfen Kill ability, and this is basically plus one attacks aura to any infantry, biker or cavalry units within six inches of them, or blood claws within twelve. The wolfen themselves can't be affected by this one, but to be honest they do have a very decent amount of attacks in the first place. But you also can't use it on models that have used the Curse of the Wolfen Hunt ability to make a charge this turn. In general they will be good for your combat though, either by getting your units more reliably into close combat, or helping improve their fighting ability when they're there, so they're really quite nice in synergy alongside your other Space Wolves units. So overall, Wolfen are a frankly devastating close combat unit that have enough attacks to down nearly any target in the game, provided they can catch them in close combat. They can move quickly through advancing and charging and reroll charging, fight in death, and also buff your nearby Space Wolf units. So let's have a talk about how we can get more out of them with buffs and synergies. As with all Space Wolf melee units, they'll make great use of Hunters Unleashed and Savage Fury, their unique assault doctrine, that gets them yet more hits on sixes. I don't think we necessarily need to do any more ludicrous calculations as to how killy they can get in melee, but every little extra bit of damage buff can be helpful, particularly if you're fighting with the last few members of a depleted squad later in the game. And we already know they can delete virtually any threat that they want to if they get a charge on it. In terms of character supports, Space Wolves generally have a lot. Wolf Lords and Battle Leaders can get you hip rerolls to hit and wound. Wolf Priests can be particularly handy for getting them shorter charge ranges by giving them plus two to charge, which could be handy if you've set them up on the hunt and they can meet a Wolf Priest coming in from reserve. And you can also heal them and provide other litanies like the new one from Saga of the Beast, giving them plus one damage against vehicles. In general though, the Wolfen do tend to be pretty self-reliant, already giving themselves great movement buffs and having more than enough close combat damage for most normal opponents. You can get transport options for Wolfen, they can hitch a ride in a Storm Wolf or Stormfang gunship, or potentially move up the board inside a Land Raider or Land Raider Crusader. They are both interesting options, and certainly do increase the chance of the squad reaching the enemy unharmed, but they are very expensive points wise, and if you really want to invest in Wolfen reaching the enemy lines, you might just well be worth buying more Wolfen next to them, and running them straight up the board with Storm Shields, as as we've mentioned they do move pretty fast. In terms of stratagems, we've already mentioned that using the cunning of the wolf for one command point to set them up in reserve can be an easy way of getting them close to your enemy. 
Now this will limit you as to where exactly you can bring them in on the board, particularly against an army that's got a lot of board control, but it should at least guarantee that you're within a 9 inch charge of something in the enemy army. I think it'll work better generally against more elite armies where they have less control of where you come in, but to get such a big scary melee squad so close to the enemy without having taken any casualties at all is quite a big deal, particularly if you can coordinate with them winding up near a wolf priest who's cast that litany of plus 2 to charge. With that reroll, that should pretty much guarantee that they can get in. Keen senses could be an option if you want to fire those auto launchers on advancing without penalty on their ballistic skill of 5+. plus. If you are running them, then I'm sure in some situations it will be worth doing for 1 CP. With a big squad presuming you advance, that could be up to an extra 10 hits just for that stratagem. Finally, from the main book, on the chapter to fight again is an absolutely great choice for Wolfen. We've already talked about the sheer crazy amount of damage they can do. If you can orchestrate that so they delete a big threat with their first set of swinging, and then they move in and bash up the next one with their second activation via Honor the Chapter, then you could be doing an absolute knockout blow to the enemy army, provided you've got them into something important. It's very expensive, but with the amount of damage that you can do with these, it could be some of the best command points you could possibly spend. From the new Saga of the Beast book, Transhuman Physiology is a great option for keeping Wolfen alive while they move up the table. As they're only toughness 4, it's quite likely that your opponent will be shooting things at them that wound them on 3s, so a very solid buff against that sort of shooting will certainly help them keep alive, and could well be worth the 2 command point investment. Finally, if you ever do find yourself in the fortunate position of having an enemy unit within 6 inches of the Wolfen at the end of their charge phase, you can use counter charge for one command point to perform a 6 inch heroic intervention with any space wolf unit, and if you can ever spend one command point to give yourself an entire extra fight phase with a unit of wolfen, it's likely going to be worth it. Just by this existing, your opponent knows that they will have to stay 6 inches away from your squad of wolfen unless they want whatever was nearby to be very, very dead. So how would I want to run these guys in game? For me personally, I generally want to consider running quite a lot of Storm Shields and Thunder Hammers, more for the very high durability that you gain, though the absolutely apocalyptic damage that you can unleash with it is just a handy side effect. I typically prefer to run big squads of these melee specialists, just because it's going to take a lot of focus fire concentrated in one area to prevent you from reaching close combat, rather than if you're running multiple small units, it might be easier for your opponent to focus down one and just stay away from some of the others. I think it could well be worth just taking one or two of the Wolfen unupgraded with no Storm Shield and just have the Wolfen Claws to primarily use as bullet sponges or the things that you want to die first whenever you're being shot by AP nothing attacks where they're not really much less durable than the Storm Shields, but they're significantly less expensive. The three main ways you can run them are either outflanking as we mentioned with the stratagem, running them directly up the board, or packing them into a transport. And it's quite nice that with that stratagem you have the option of either doing that or not doing it, depending on the opponent. You don't have to commit until you know what you're facing. As I said, I'd be more tempted to outflank them if I thought there wasn't much chance of them making it into close combat, just running up the board. Or if you're fighting a more elite list where you're going to have a lot more control of what you get into and what you can hit in close combat when you first come on. On the other hand, if there's decent line of sight blocking terrain in the middle, maybe some big central ruins that the Wolfen can hide in for a turn as they advance up, that could be a much better option, and it could park a ludicrously dangerous melee threat right in the centre of the board, and force your opponent to stay well away from them. If you are starting on the board, I'd think about starting in cover if you have any Wolfen where it's going to make a difference, i.e. if you're not taking Storm Shields, and certainly use any line of sight blocking terrain that you possibly can. You'd need to balance this with the fact that you want to be starting as far forward as you possibly can as well, as these guys just aren't going to be worth it unless you're getting into melee, so starting as far forward as possible will make that happen in the least time possible. If your opponent deploys rashly at the front of their deployment zone, on some maps you might actually even be able to get a first turn charge with the Wolven if they underestimate exactly how far they can move, but most of the time you're going to be likely aiming for a turn 2 or perhaps even turn 3 charge if they're really surrendering the entire board to you and castling up at the back of their deployment zone. Wolfen are reasonably durable with those Storm Shields and 5 plus feel no pain type saves, but a single lone squad of them with no other scary melee threats is likely to be able to be focused down before it reaches the enemy army, so if you are using assault threats moving up the board, it's not a bad idea to have more than one, maybe multiple blobs of Wolfen, or Wolfen plus Thunderwolf cavalry, or maybe other scary aggressive threats such as deep striking terminators or something. If you're setting them up in outflank, presume you can get the normal 9 inch charge range. With their reroll, the Wolfen will typically only have a 48% chance of making that charge. So without another buff, such as a Wolf Priest's extra charge aura, 
it's not going to happen, likely as not, so you would have to prepare to be able to take a turn's firepower wherever you come in, although obviously it would be ideal just to make the charge and start smashing up the enemy. If you're using transports, I'd consider starting land raiders pretty far forwards as well. If the enemy moves up towards you, then you can potentially just get straight out, have the extra 3 inch range plus the model's base, and then move, advance and charge as per normal, potentially giving you something like a 22 to 23 inch average threat range turn 1 with their reroll charge. If you're using a storm wolf, I think about flying it to somewhere where if it does blow up, then your wolfman won't be too unhappy getting out, particularly if you could park it next to some line of sight blocking ruins or something like that and have them get out into them, it won't matter too much if your ride shot out from under you. When you do get into close combat, the Wolfen are likely going to have all the melee damage output that you're going to need, so I'd really focus on smashing up the enemy unit that you need to, then trying to consolidate into somewhere safe, break one enemy unit, and hopefully wrap and trap the next, moving some models around to try point one of the enemy models so they won't be able to fall back from you, thus keeping your Wolfen safe from being shot, or if that's not possible, Ideally, either being out of line of sight or at least in cover is a reasonable second prize. I'd certainly be considering the option to fight again, if you do have the option to tear the heart right out of an enemy army. And don't be afraid you can afford to be just that little bit more gung-ho about charging the Wolfen into scary melee threats, as they do get to fight for a second time potentially if the enemy unit tries to kill them. Overall, the Wolfen are a very scary and powerful Space Wolves melee threat, and certainly one of their more competitive units on the tabletop. Their alternatives might be Thunderwolf Cavalry, who I'm afraid to say I think Wolfen do generally outcompete on the table, largely due to the infantry keywords and their additional special rules that they bring. Another solid option are Wolfguard Terminators, who can also pack a bit of ranged punch and aren't anywhere near as limited as to where or not they come in from reserve, so it could be far more flexible positioning wise if you're going the reserves route. Hopefully the Wolfen will be seeing a bit of a new lease of life, with their shiny new combat doctrine, and the general buff that Space Wolves got from Saga of the Beast, they're certainly a scary and dynamic melee unit to be seeing on the other side of the table. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the Wolfen down in the comments below, including if there's any strategies or tips that I've missed with them, or if there are any mistakes or errors in the video. We'll be continuing with our Space Wolves series regularly on the channel, so feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more, and we do have regular 40k content coming all the time on All Specs Tactics. If you'd like to support the channel, I do have a Patreon page that allows this channel to keep on producing videos and focus more time and energy on making them as opposed to my regular job. If you're enjoying the content regularly, then any support is greatly appreciated, as it does take a good few hours to make each video. There are also a few other benefits for Patreons, such as access to videos early, voting on what comes next on the channel, and the occasional prize draw. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, then please check out the link down below. In any case, a massive thank you for watching, I'll hope to see you guys next time.